So, good evening, everyone. Um, I was told that I should tell you a tale today. So, first thing I thought, uh, maybe handmaid's tale. So, no, too scary for everyone. So, I will tell you a power system tale and how power systems are changing. We're transforming them. And uh, we will also transform our cities, in particular, our beautiful city of Melbourne. So, let's start uh, from what traditional power systems are. And as everyone would know, traditional will produce electricity in large-scale power plants, uh, fueled uh, on gas, coal, and so on. And then we will power you know, lots of loads, lots of demand, for example, uh, the cities. I don't know if you have thought about it, but actually the way that we operate power system, we planned power system in the, in the past, is all about uh, a trade of between affordability and security, what we call the energy dilemma. Make it cheap, but also keep the lights on. What's happening now with more and more renewables? You know, we're changing the system, the energy system, because we want to achieve a CO2 emission reduction. We want to fight climate change. In order to do that, we are substituting conventional power plants with more wind, more solar, and everyone is, is happy about it, or almost everyone. Now, what does it mean for the energy dilemma and the way that actually we operate the system? Well, effectively, it means a lot, because the dilemma is now becoming a trilemma, even more complicated. On top of affordability and reliability, we now need to trade off with decarbonization, and they interact a lot. And uh, out of these three pillars, the one that is most effective is, guess what, reliability. I'm sure you've seen this. How do we provide reliability today? But basically through conventional power plants. So gas power plants, coal power plants provide reliability. What happens if they are displaced by renewables? Can renewables actually provide the same level of reliability as conventional power plants? Everyone is asking this. What happens if the sun does not shine? What happens if wind does not blow? What we, what we do about it? It's very, very challenging. What is it? Well, believe me, engineers uh, did the big magic in the past. Like sending the man to the moon in 1969. So you, you think that engineers will not be able to deliver a low carbon energy system that is also affordable and reliable. It's all about understanding, actually, what the, fun the fundamentals. And what are the fundamentals of reliability? Reliability effectively means uh, how to match, uh, second by second, supply and demand. So traditionally, we have a variable load and flexible conventional power plants following the load. Now, actually, we would need to follow generation because the variability in, is in wind and solar. But then, why don't we have demand indeed following generation? Why don't we use or exploit the flexible demand that we have available, maybe storage, maybe electric vehicles in the future, to follow the production of renewables? And where can you do this? Of course, you can do this primarily in a city where the flexible consumption is. So can we transform Melbourne into the first flex city in the world, on top of being the most livable city in, in the world? Can now Melbourne play a completely new role in the big Australian energy system? This is the grand plan that the system operator has got about developing renewable energy zones all around, big wind farms, big solar farms. And now, you take Melbourne, and Melbourne will be there to become, effectively, a flexible virtual power plant. What do I mean a virtual power plant? It's not in the sense, uh, as many think, that you would uh, produce more energy than you would consume, but rather being able to provide those fundamental reliability services that at the moment are being provided by conventional power plants. If you think these are all crazy ideas, you know, crazy professors, crazy ideas, well, let's go back to the future to you know, when everything started, 1878. We'll make electricity so cheap that only the rich will burn candles. Thomas Edison stated this when electricity did not exist, and he built electricity. In 1882, he created from scratch the first power system, the first generator, the first distribution system, and gave the light with electricity to 59 customers in Lower Manhattan. Why did he do that? Because he wanted to become rich by selling light bulbs that he had patented. But then, at a certain point, he realized it's a great idea, but wait a second, these are powered on electricity, and electricity does not exist. 
So let, let me invent it. Let me change complete the market. Let me change the world. Forget the candles. Now I will give you electricity. I will give you lights. Does it remind me some, someone crazy, some disruptive innovation that we see every day? Well, you may or not like you know, persons like the ones you will know well here in the picture. However, these people are changing the world. And so we want to do the same. For example, this idea of the virtual power plant, we will start, or we would like to do it, right in the heart of Melbourne, where the university is. We would like to build the virtual power plant, the first one, in the Parkville campus of the university. So this is the, the vision. We would like to demonstrate that university campus can provide the same or even better technical and market services as a conventional gas turbine plant. Yes, we want to have a virtual pipe plant that is clean in the university. We want to displace coal and gas with the university, right where we teach to future generations how the energy system will be. So I'm sure that if you are interested, or I'm sure you are interested, please come, talk to me. We can do this uh, all together. We want to change the whole energy system of the city, Great Melbourne, and the whole Australia. Thank you.